I'd like that you listen to this. Problem solving, abstract reasoning, calmness under pressure, patience, spotmanship, creative thinking, pattern recognition, and strategic thinking. These are skills that future leaders need to develop. And the truth is, there is a friendly, a very game-friendly way that kids can learn these leadership skills even without knowing that they are learning it. And that is the game of chess. My name is Emeka Eze and this is Daba TV. You are on our television where we get to tell you and teach you about leadership, business and the most interesting parts of life. This is the Business Leader of the Week and on today's episode of the Business Leader of the Week, I'm going to be talking to a professional chess trainer, someone who's impacted and changed a lot of lives. Kids, to be precise, between the ages of, say, 5 to like 15, 16 and even 18, these kids have been doing amazingly well and it is worth the while that to have our guests in the studio today. I'll go for this short break and when we're back, I'll be introducing to you the one who's changing lives with a game of chess. We'll be right back. Parents, listen to your children. We are the leaders of tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Does that sound familiar? Children these days are always on a device, either their phones, a laptop, a tablet, or the computer. Shouldn't that tell you that something is happening? Let me ask you a question. As a parent, would you rather your child become a competitor or a creator? Think about it. I know that as parents, we've been saddled with the responsibility on making sure that our children are equipped for the future. Well, here is an opportunity for you to position them for such a future, not just academically, but also on their skill set. If you're a parent, Daba Kit was created for you. Daba Kit is an online education platform that uses animation, game style learning, and the internet to teach children within the age of 4 to 16 how to use and leverage the skills of the future. We focus on areas such as art, finance, technology, and leadership. Would you like to see your child become the next Elon Musk, Max Zuckerberg, creating things like Tesla, Facebook, or their own companies? Well, now is the time to take such opportunity. Join us in a live Zoom call for parents only in the month of March, as we'll be showing you how you can position these children for the future. Remember that the future starts now. Click on the link below to register, or you can visit our website at www.debakids.com or follow us on our social media channels at Debakids. Keep being an awesome and a super parent. Welcome back from that short break. Before I went on that short break, I talked about bringing to your screens, my guests, someone who's changed lives with the game of chess, a professional chess trainer, and one who's one whom we are going to be having a cheat chat with here in the studios. He's none other than Abidogun Peter, who's been popular for actually bringing up kids from the slum, training people for chess, helping them get better, and creating future leaders. Peter, it's nice to have you in the studio today. Thank you, my car. I mean, it's, it's to me, I'll start by saying it's a privilege to have you here in the studio. It's my pleasure to be here. Too. It's, it's beyond a game what you are teaching kids or helping kids learn. And to me, I think this is a life-changing process. Yeah, so when I heard your story for the first time, we were inspired to have you on this show as the business leader of the week. But first, I'd like to clarify the audience on a couple of things. Why are we having Peter, a chess trainer? on the business leader of the week. Peter is an entrepreneur, and we're going to call him someone who is playing in the niche of social entrepreneurship. And this is practical people management and how to leverage on that to change people's life, exactly what Peter has been doing. Yeah. So once again, you're welcome to the business leader Thank of the you. week. So let's meet you officially, Peter. How can we meet Peter? Who is Peter? Yeah, my name is Abidogun Peter. I'm a professional chess coach and instructor. I'm a professional chess player as well. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm the lead instructor for Brain Chess Academy. Okay. I'm also the team leader of uh, chess education in Chess Islam Africa. Oh, great. There's yeah. something about people who play chess or 
teach chess. The calmness. <laughs> I mean, see how comported he is. All right. Um, it, it's obvious right now that our conversation today is going to revolve around the game of chess. So let me ask you, what can you tell us first about chess? Uh, chess, uh, I, would, I would define it as a game of uh, infinite possibilities. Uh, because when you make uh, the first few moves, you have like a million combinations mm. to continue from. The game is aimed at uh, developing mental skills that uh, we use throughout our lifetime. Skills such as uh, concentration, abstract reasoning, critical thinking, analysis, uh, creativity, pattern recognition, synthesis, evaluation, hmm. and so many cognitive skills as such. Wow, that's <laughs> nice. Those are skills that you learn from one single game coach. Yeah, exactly. And from all these skills you mentioned, there is none of them that cannot even apply to everyday life. All of them yeah. is applicable yeah, yeah, to the yeah, everyday yes. life of man. So when did you start playing chess? Uh, about 10 years ago. Yeah, I started playing 10 years ago. What about on a professional level? On a professional level, uh, it's five years ago. 10 years, total experience in chess playing, yeah, five, five years, years professionally exactly. playing chess. When did you start teaching it or coaching people to, to play chess? Uh, I started uh, teaching as soon as I could play. Wow, so yeah. you, you started teaching even before you went professional? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, teaching has always been my thing. So when I found out, oh, I could play chess, then I started Teach. yeah, people teaching. Yeah. Play. That makes a lot of sense. So why did you choose to play the game of chess? And how has it changed your life in any way? Okay. I'll say chess is a, uh, is a mini life. Uh, you have the opportunities to go through a life in a few minutes mm -hmm. and do it over and over again. Now, at each point uh, of those lives that you go through, uh, you grow, you learn a lot of things, you develop a lot of uh, abilities that is going to help you. So that's why chess is important. It's a whole new world by which uh, you believe you can do the impossible. And taking this belief, you can actually make it practical in real life. In life. So for you, chess was a game for you because you could actually apply what you what yeah. what you learn in chess yeah. in real life. It's like yeah. an entire life. Yeah, exactly. New world for and you. all this, you're having fun while doing this. So you're trying to tell me now that playing the game of chess is fun. It's very fun. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not boring like people who are on chess you know, people, is yes, very that's, fun that's yeah. like a popular assumption nah. people think chess is boring chess is only left for gigs mm -hmm. chess is a game of people who are extraordinarily smart mm -hmm. are you able to debunk that fact here now yes yes I'm the, chess is a game for everybody any and everybody can learn the game of chess it's, i think i want to agree with that and you teach kids how to play chess yes I do. what's the youngest age range for a child who's taught how to play chess uh i think i've taught four Four. Four, yes. And Four, yeah, they were yeah. able to play at least play something. Or yes, they got yes, good yes. At the game. Yes, they got good at the game. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So while you were introducing yourself, you made mention of being the team lead at Chess and Slums. Yeah. yeah so, so you want to tell us a bit about Chess and Slums? Uh, Chess and Slums is a non government organization. Okay. Uh that we have taken chess to be a tool of transforming lives. Right. Yeah. All right, fine, fine, fine. That makes sense. Now, why I'm particular about chess and slums is because a lot of stories came around. I mean, the team at Ch chess and slums being responsible for, you know, a couple of projects. For example, you, Abidogun, um, Abidogun Peter, are popular for training kids on how to play chess yes, in two yeah. particular ways. Yeah, yeah. First off, there is chess in schools. Chess in schools. And there's volunteering chess. Exactly. Let's, let's establish, let's differentiate between these two. How can you help us differentiate between chess in schools and volunteering chess? So uh, chess in school is uh, uh, the major learning platform in schools, whereby chess is done as uh, either a curriculum, that's okay. a subject, mm -hmm. or an extracurricular activities. Activity. Yeah, studies are shown that uh, chess even increase uh, the total general grade of kids. Uh, in school. So most schools have adopted chess as uh, one of the two they want to use to help their kids develop faster. Okay. So and we also have volunteer chess uh, 
uh, like what Chess in Slum is doing. We use Chess as a tool to transform lives by going to slum communities where kids do not have access to basic education, uh, even good uh, standard of living. Mm. Okay, so at the end of the day, what I understand from what you said, for chess in schools, schools add chess game to yes. their curriculum and yes. students participate in it. Exactly. So obviously, you as a trainer is paid for Yeah, for yeah, that. definitely. But however, definitely. when it comes to volunteering chess, you are apparently not paid for it, like yeah, the name sounds. It, you it, volunteer. Yeah, to yeah, it's people. free. It's free. What is what is in it for you? I mean, since you're not paid for it, what's the motivation behind that for you? Uh, first is passion. Uh, okay. When you are passionate, passionate about, about the game, about the game, and okay. are passionate about uh, improving lives, passionate about creating a new possibility for a young child. So these are things that gives uh, me as a person fulfillment. So whether I'm paid or not, I still wake up every day to do what I do now. Wow, interesting. So the passion for yeah. people yeah. and for the game is actually pushing you to do what you do. I mean, it's mm. obvious in the escapades you had during the Osho the Chess um, competition. Mm. I mean, that's what we're going to talk about now. There are so many media houses that publish that success story. So many of them talked about it, how the boys at Osho the came out to successfully win a chess competition. Let's start by asking, are those boys from any elite school around Oshodi? They don't go to schools. They, they didn't go to schools. Yeah, They're yeah. Educated. They're no not educated. Education. Yeah, yeah. Only, only a few of them might have uh, been in school, but they are all dropped out. Let's hear the story. Tell us about tell us about these guys. Let, let, let's know how... First, what competition did they win? Uh, they win the Oshodi on that bridge chess competition. Chess competition. Yeah, we went there to train them for two weeks straight. So at the end of uh, our training, we decided to organize a chess competition for them. And uh, it was a very big one because uh, different people from uh, the state came to actually see these boys to be a chess player, not a thug, hmm. not a thief, not a robber. Who should the underbridge yeah. chess competition? Yeah. If you are a Lagosian and you're familiar with who should you, then you're familiar with on that bridge, or should you? Then you should know what we're talking about. When we talk about slums, we talk about not being armed robbers, not being criminals or thugs. Those are places that could produce people of such caliber. But those are the same set of people in the same location that chess in slums was able to locate to play the game of chess and to change their lives. How are you able to change their lives? So uh, the Chess in Slum project is headed by uh, Tunde Onokoya. Okay. He's the convener of uh, the project. Uh, we work together as a team. Uh, we have a team of so many chess instructors, instructors and even volunteers from different educational parts. Yeah. Uh, because we just don't teach this uh, kids chess. chess yeah, other, yeah, there other yeah. Stuff there are other stores we teach them to make that education uh, complete. Compact. Exactly. But uh, chess is the foremost tool. It's something that uh, uh, they found uh, amusing. They want to want to touch the pieces. They want to play. They want to compete. It's something that uh, distract them from uh, sleeping under the bridge, mm. not eating for two or three days not having clothes to wear. So this was uh, a new passion for them. This is something that they would wake up and want to do. So that, that, was, that was the idea behind the game, using that chest to unlock their mind. Mm -hmm. Because uh, these kids, uh, most of them have given up on life. Mm -hmm. They live on day-to-day -day basics. They don't think about tomorrow, they think about now. How can I get through today? But with this game, they are are willing to want to think, uh, okay, what can I do tomorrow? How can I even get better to leave this yeah. place? How can I become somebody in life? So this is what the game of chairs have done to their mind. Wow. So, to, I mean, this is, I think we need to practically explain what it feels like or what the life of those kids in a day looks like. You have spent two weeks with them. You know these kids well. You know them by name. They talk to you. You instructed them. So I believe you could tell us what a typical day. Let's take the chess experience away from their lives now. Mm -hmm. Before chess and slums got to Osho the Underbridge, 
and train them for two weeks to have led them to win the competition, what would their everyday life look like? Yeah, their everyday life is a struggle. Yeah, from uh, waking up very early in the morning, as early as five or six, uh, to just sitting down on the railway tracks under the bridge, smoking, crack, Sorry, weed. Smoking, crack, yeah, weed. At yeah. what age? Uh, I think we have as young as 10, 11, 13, 14. Do all of them drugs? all smoke, yeah. All of them. All of them smoke there. Uh, then when it's daylight, uh, some of them do all these media jobs. Some of them do conductor. Some we go and clean gutters. Some we sell no smacks. Some we help people carry loads from one place to the other. And such tasks like that. Some we beg for money. Uh, that's how they live. And all they want is uh, a meal a day. Once they can eat in the morning or in the afternoon, they are fine, they are fine for, for the rest of the day. Hmm. So that's that's how their life was. No, no beating, no brushing of teeth, no change of clothes, no even a place to stay. They all sleep on the trail rack under the bridge. So even when train is passing in the midnight, they have uh, the older ones there. We wake everybody up. They stand up away from there. When the train passes, they go, they back, go to back to sleep. sleep. Yeah. Okay. Now that's very challenging. For those of you who don't know who a conductor is, it's one of the very unthinkable job for a kid between the age of 10, 15 to actually take up. It is the, the, the responsibility in this part of the world. What they do is they coordinate their affairs in public transport. And so they get monies from the transport, um, from the commuters. And if they need to get change from their money, they give them the change, you know. They just coordinate affairs in the bus. They are, they are not part of the passengers. And so sometimes they haven't made to hang yeah, on the buses and they don't have to sit so that the passengers in the vehicle will all be seated. And boys between the age of 10 to 15 yeah. embark on, on this, this kind this of job, yeah. jobs. And that is, that is what they do every day to survive. Yeah. And then chess came their way. How, how did they receive the game of chess? How were, were they receptive to it? Yeah, the first time uh, Tunde and a few members of the team went to actually introduce the game to them, they were very receptive because uh, it's something they had never seen. It's something that uh, when they were being showed pictures on phone, uh, well-dressed people in ties and suits and corporates are, are playing. So gave them the idea that it's not only those people that can play, which is true, you can also play. And they were interested in learning something different mm -hmm. from the type of life they, they had been living. And they were very, very quick in learning. Very, very quick. It shows that uh, these kids, we have a lot of uh, talent among them. Yeah. Their intelligence is very high because we did the few days we were able to work with them we were doing something that would take uh somewhat months yeah, to achieve great. yeah so it's just because of condition uh, as opportunity. exactly that they are living where they are living so are we now saying from what you say now that these kids are just as easily accessible as walking down the bridge and approaching them and teaching them chess were there any challenges of getting through to them yeah uh well i say challenges because uh it was planned as a chess player before you make any move you had thought about it you had thought about uh occurrences that could happen from That's it and happens. how to approach those so it was a solid grab we had gone to seek for the uh, uh consent of uh the ballet around there we had gone to the police station close to there and even the what we call now they are number one there. Right. Yes. So we are going to see all necessary parties before going to meet with the boys. If you go there without uh, anybody or without meeting anybody, they would they would beat uh, you. They could collect your phone or even smash it to pieces. I was going to see how you guys successfully stayed two weeks in a place like that. Yeah, I know. 
No properties lost? Uh, no properties lost because uh, what we did was we involved them in the project. The older ones uh, were part of our team. Okay. They were the security, the ones that run around to get our chairs and table for the trainings, the ones that make sure the, those boys have their bath in the morning because they don't do that before now. So the one that make sure, okay, uh, when it's time to give them food, they are properly lined up, and uh, any new or strange faces that come, they make sure they protect us from the other rest of the gang around there because there are a lot yeah, of gangs. They gang. live in gangs. Yeah, they live in gangs. So, so they because uh, while we were there, several gangs would come to tell us, ah, oh, we need to pay money for these and that. So those ones that we are involved. I don't want that shield on against those oh, external. So you didn't have to make yeah. any extra Exactly, exactly. That. So, um, um, I mean, Chess for Slums being an NGO catered for their food in that period of time? Yeah, in that period of time. It was actually beyond two weeks. The first phase was two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, so we are in even the after phase now. We've been going there for about three weeks now. Yeah, to continue uh, the program because the program is in phases. So we have uh, an exit plan on how we are to bring them out of the slums to the ones that want to go back home, mm -hmm. want to reconnect with their family, those that want to go Most back to school. Some of them are not even with their families. Yes, yes. Those that want to go back to school, those ones that want to learn a trade, or the other. So we had plans to actually uh, transform them from where they were to where they want to be. All right, Peter. So you've heard from Peter himself, he's talked about the kids in the slums, he's talked about how they got to the slums, how it wasn't just, I mean, a walk in the park, but of course, how they were able to make impact. And most importantly, how rapidly the kids were responding to a game of chess they never had in their lives before. What does that tell you about the kids? Their brains are open, their brains are sharp, they are willing to learn. It is the best time to impact in the life of humans when they are very much young. We'll go for a commercial break and when we're right back, we're going to talk more on chess, kids, and the business leader of the week with Peter. We'll be right back. One trader will win one million Naira this month and it could be you. Trade the most volume of Naira pairs on OBX to increase your chances of winning. Remember, you can deposit Naira from your bank account and buy Bitcoin, Wakanda Inu, USDT, BUSD and Shiba Inu on OBX. Download the app to enjoy smooth trading. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back from that break. This is still Daba TV. You're watching the Business Leader of the Week with Emeka Eze. And with me in the studio is Peter. We've been talking about slums the chess game and we're talking about the Osho the chess game there is more to this story it's beyond the Osho the chess competition on that big chess competition and of course peter is here to give us even more stories around how he's been changing lives for the game of chess peter thank you so much for staying with us so thank, far thank you for um having... there is still one question that bothers me amongst all the stories you've told around the chess game and with the Osho the kids these kids, at some point where you were talking, you mentioned they don't have formal education. Yeah, they don't. I'm so sure their first language is not the English language. Yeah. And communicating with them in a formal setting may be difficult to an extent. Why were you convinced that they would learn the game of chess and they would give the results that we saw afterwards? All right. Uh, we're not convinced based on experience because uh, right. this is not the first... Uh, project we are doing. We have done several outreach. We have done in uh, Majidu in Ikorodu. Okay. We are done in Makoko community. And now we are coming to uh, Osho the Underbridge. So the challenges, the language barrier, we have encountered it in the past. So we looked for ways by which we can uh, improve ourselves, okay. especially in communicating uh, with the kids. We use language that uh, some of them are, are, some of us have to learn the street words of trying to explain things to them mm. because uh, teaching has to be relatable yes. to what they can see, what they hear on daily basis. So that's, that's how we're able to bridge that gap of uh, communication. communication. Yeah. I, I really would have loved to see you teach these kids <laughs> the game of chess. I would love to see how you communicate those things to them because 
I know what you're talking about when you try to describe these kids. I have seen pictures of it. I have come, I've encountered them once, I mean, once in, in, in a long time. But then at the same time, getting them to play the game of chess is what I haven't seen. I'd really love to see that. Now, talking about that particular competition, the Under Bridge Show, the game of chess competition, a young man from the team you trained won that competition. Yeah, What's his yeah. name? Adil Yefawas. Adil Yefawas. Yeah. What is who was Fawaz before the games? Uh, Fawaz uh, was involved in several jobs. He did uh, from a bus conductor to carrying looks to selling of face masks and all that. Fawaz has always been a talkative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a lively boy. He jokes a lot. Uh, once in a while, he gets into fight, as do like any other yeah, kid them, yeah. under the bridge. But he was somebody that uh, fell in love in the game from the very first class. Yeah, yeah he he sees how uh, the game could change his life, yeah. and he made sure he used the opportunity to learn as much as he could because after every class when he doesn't do well in class he comes to tell me that ah toba dollar i'm not going to go <laughs> that's always his motivation and what does that mean in every English? day it means when, when tomorrow comes he's going to defeat all oh, of man. them yeah so no matter the number of losses he gets in a day at the end of the class that's always it's closing line and tomorrow is always better the next is always better and that's how i was able to actually uh come first in the tournament interesting how old is fawaz uh, fawaz is 18. he's 18 now because yeah. at the time the games were played how old was he yeah he was still 18. He was, was yeah, 18 yeah. At the time. Clock, right? now where is fawaz currently uh, Fawaz is off the bridge. Uh, okay. He currently leads with the convener of chess and slums, that's Tundi Okaya. Okay. Yeah. And he's doing well. He's doing Does well. Does he still play chess? Uh, he plays chess uh, because uh, it's in the group of, in the team of chess players. So he plays chess every day. He's beginning to get uh, a little formal education. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's even in coding school now. He's in oh he's in coding school now. Yeah. Is that his personal? Is that what he wants to do? He wants to learn. Uh, yeah. These these are opportunities that uh, are that that were yeah. open to him from winning the chess That's tournament. Good. So we are trying to make him use every available opportunity he has so that uh, he can become better. And one of these opportunity we open that pathway for okay. his actual dream. Great. You could see that it goes beyond just telling kids that you are the president of tomorrow. Say I am the pilot of tomorrow. I'm going to be a lawyer tomorrow. There are practical ways to make children become what they want. Imagine putting a child through the game of chess where he has to use his own, I mean, thinking abilities, critical thinking, patience, and creativity to win a game. It's the same thing as having them, put, putting them in a real life situation and then having them win at the end of the day. I mean, there's nothing to me could even beat that. But still on this conversation, um, Peter, what provisions has this movement made available for these boys? Aside the fact that Fawaz has won it, Fawaz now stays with the convener of chess and slums. Are there further provisions make, made for the boys at Oshodi who plays the chess game and plays it well? Yes, uh, from the start, there was a plan. The plan was beyond teaching them the game. Mm -hmm. We only used the game to draw their interest and uh, change the way their mind works, the way their brain works. Chess was a tool to the liberation exactly. of that lifestyle. Exactly. So uh, the end game, we hope to be able to take all of them that were involved in our program off yeah. the bridge. Uh, some of them will be reunited with their family. For those that have, uh, for some of them will be going to uh, private shelter homes. Mm. Uh, some of them are going to learn trades. The older ones that cannot go into shelter homes anymore yeah. are going to learn trades. I'm going to be uh, counseled, monitored. And uh, the aim is to just take all of them out from the, storm. from the slum and give them an opportunity to do something in life. That makes a lot of sense. 
we've said so much about the Oshu the boys. We've said so much about what their lifestyle is like. And of course, all these conversations has revolved around volunteering. Sure. But what other impact have you made on the younger generation using the game of chess? Yeah, like uh, we said, or uh, like I've been saying, chess is uh, a door to many possibilities. Mm -hmm. So the ones that are good in the game, the one that goes on to master in game, I've gone for several competitions. I won several medals. And winning several medals is recognition and even money, mm -hmm. a laptop, scholarship, and uh, even exposure and experiences. Yeah. Most of them have never left uh, the confine of their environment because their parents cannot afford to give them that. They've been able to see what the world looks like. They've been able to see how other people from the path of the world looks like. And they've been able to see how they can actually look like in yeah. the future. So we have, uh, some of them have gained scholarship. Uh, some of them have uh, left the slums, are living uh, in homes. Uh, we have some that have won uh, tournaments for different states in the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, those are the things that I could mention as well. Yeah, during our conversation prior to this um, show, you told me about two kids and the age of 10 that you have actually been able to also impact their lives. One of them suffering from cerebral palsy. Can you tell us more about this? Yeah, well, I would... Well, I say this is one of my favorite stories, yeah. Uh, the name of the boy is Ferdinand Mahoumo. Uh, in the Makoko project, okay. uh, which was early last year, uh, Makoko is the largest floating slum in the world. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, a the lot of floating, floating slum, slum in the world. A lot of them lives on uh, um, water. Mm -hmm. What this house is constructed of water, woods or wood. water. Uh, water too. Yeah, very dirty water. That's where they live their life. They, they don't go to school because one, they cannot afford it. Two, uh, they have so many siblings in that community. A woman has as much as uh, 10 kids, 12 kids. Hmm. So it's, it's uh, a lot to cater for them. It's a lot to... So they don't see dreams for their children. They just feed them on day-to-day -day basis. So that was the community that Ferdinand came yeah, from. Now Ferdinand is suffering from cerebral palsy. He's... Uh, Someone that uh, his peers will make jest of because he cannot uh, talk properly, cannot work properly. Uh, when we started our training, he wasn't even part of the initial kids there. But one day he was peeping through uh, the window while the class was going. And somebody saw him and told him to come, but he did not answer. And the person, one of our volunteers, went outside. I spoke to him and convinced him to join. And he started class that day. Uh, after three days, he was doing far better than people that were in class before him. Yeah. And this is someone that everybody sees as stupid. Everybody sees as somebody that cannot think for himself. He was able to recognize pattern quickly. He was able to be able to identify uh, Problems he was able to prefer solutions mm. in his own unique ways. So it was uh, very exciting to teach him because once once you look into this boy's eyes, you feel this this warmth, this joy that uh, he loves what he's yeah doing. he loves what he's doing. Uh, it was like uh, what would I call was like a genius in his own world but people could not understand him because of his condition but thank god with the game of chairs we we're able to identify yeah. that and we we're able to develop him to uh, be better so seriously animation and game style learning is one thing that has always worked for kids and that is typical of the game of chess first off it's a game you're playing against somebody 
there is this urgency to want to get better than the other person exactly. and secondly it is animated there are there are, there are different i mean pieces yeah pieces carved yeah. in different shapes exactly. and of course it's pictorial you can yeah, see what you play see. and this this is motivational enough for the kids to play around and then do something i believe you're learning something this is the business leader of the week drop in the comment section if you're learning something tell us what you are really enjoying in this episode tell us if you like your kid to learn the smart way of course interestingly drop in the comment section and tell us if you're enjoying what you're seeing and what other business leader you like us to bring up on the show we're still on with peter abidogo and um peter will gradually come into the end of this very impactful and emotional conversation at the same time but i'm gonna ask you what does the future hold for a generation of smart chess players in Nigeria? What do you think the future holds? What are the opportunities that are bound for smart chess players in Nigeria? The youths, the young ones. Yeah, currently, people have been able to see what chess can do. Uh, before, it has always been all preaching, but now it, the uh, evidence are clear. Everybody can see that this is like no other game. Uh, this is going to change a lot of things uh, in this generation. A generation of thinking people, mm -hmm. smart people, people that are willing to face problems, people that are willing to come up with different solutions, solutions to, to problems. Problem. So we are creating a generation of thinkers, people that will move the current state of our country mm -hmm. to a better state. People that would... Uh, stay anywhere in the world and make the country proud. People that can converse and compete anywhere around the globe. Yeah. So right now, we are doing a lot of projects uh, in different sectors using chess. Okay. Even to people that we con uh, consider as a uh well i put this dysfunctional people mm -hmm. yeah we are using this game to actually change their someone mind like ferdinand someone like ferdinand and a whole lot of Others. people are there and this even as uh, an inspiration to to others to people that like to procrastinate uh, mm -hmm. the game of chess we completely they change that right. yes you have to think I think about now, think about uh, what we happen after and what we happen after. I think about ways you can go about things in a different manner. Wow. So it requires a lot, a lot of coordination, a lot of planning, a lot of um, re resilience. Because yeah. trust me, the project that you're pulling, it's not a project that one with a faint heart could just have to go into yeah. and succeed in it. And so I'm, I'm going to just ask this more like an extra question. Um, if you are going to actually advise people, places, parents out there on chess, what would you say to them? I would say that uh, they should uh, encourage their kids to learn chess as early as five years mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it's going to helping the development of that child faster than a child that is not involved mm. in chess yeah mm. a pick a child will pick up so many abilities from the game while having fun it doesn't affect any other academics work instead it even improves yeah so they don't even them. know they don't see it as yeah a process so of... people say ah my child are writing exams they are not playing chess they don't know ma okay try it what was your score for last time in your child allow him play chess through this period let him write the exam and what will be his score so they now discover that while he was playing chess it does better than exactly. before so some uh mental capacity has been built in that child during uh, the time he was then in the game so he's able to now even uh solve problems better think better read better the child knows before he plays chess, he has to read, he has to do his choice, mm -hmm. he has to do this, he has to do that. Because he loves the game, he wants to play. He does all the right things, even without you telling yeah. him or her. So that's how the chess habits has actually mm -hmm. helped kids to grow and learn. 
Interesting, interesting. You've been hearing from Peter himself, the chess coach, one who's been changing the lives of kids around Nigeria with the game of chess. And not just kids, the least you expect them to be kids from the slums, the uneducated, those who have not seen the four walls of the classroom before, learning the game of chess and doing even better at it than you can imagine. So, Peter, how can you be contacted to instruct, to teach, to help people learn this game of chess? Well, I'm uh, on social media. Uh, I'm on Instagram. My username is uh, Pitarowski. Okay. Same as uh, Twitter. Okay. Pitarowski on Twitter. Okay. And on Facebook, my name is Abidogun Peter. So I, I can be contacted uh, by those different angles. So you will respond to a direct message if you Yeah, to surely you I do. Surely I do. Interestingly, we've come to the end of the business leader of the week. Today is an interesting ride. We've heard from Peter himself. If you want to contact him, visit his social media handles, Peter Roski for Instagram and Twitter. Is yeah. that correct? And for, for Facebook, you can find him at Abidogun Peter. Peter. And now we are going to take a short break. And when we come back, we'll look at the final segment. This is where we'll play a short game with Peter. Five quick questions, and he doesn't have to think too much before he responds to this question. Let us see the other side of Peter with this bonus question. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Do welcome back from the short break. You're still watching the Business Leader of the Week on Daba TV. I am Emeka Eze. My guest in the studio today is Abidogun Peter. We've gotten to that part where we we'll play a bonus game and then we'll ask Peter very quick five questions. And so, Peter, here it comes. Question number one. Tell us your favorite Nigerian meal that is not of your tribe. Huh. <laughs> I, I was you. going to say Amala. That's, 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 that's my favorite. Uh, so outside Amala. Uh, that is, if you don't say rice, don't say beans. <laughs> Give us a native meal that is not of your tribe. I don't think I have any. You know, it has to be Amala. It has to be Amala. <laughs> this man loves his food yeah, so much. It has much. to be Amala. We beggary. We beggary. Yes, okay. <laughs> the specific. All right. Now, what is one thing you will go all out to help other people achieve? Yeah, their dreams. Their dreams, okay. really. Even if you're not paid for it, mm. you can go all out to help people do that. All right. Tell us one person you will never say no to. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people. I would say my friends in general. So you put your friends in one. Yeah. Anybody you call your friend, yeah, my friend, you never say no to them. Yeah. Beautiful. Now tell us your definition of the right woman in three words. Intelligence. Okay. Compassionate. Mm -hmm. uh, Strong. Strong. Beautiful. Intelligent, compassionate. That one got to me. And strong. That's beautiful. I mean, if 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 one way or the other, the 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 woman is made out of the ribs of a man, as yeah. opposed to like, I mean, make up the man. That woman then has to be intelligent, okay. has to be compassionate and strong. Because all the time, you as a man may not be strong. Okay. I think I agree with you on that. And so the final question we'll have here is define a successful life in one sentence. A successful life to me is uh, doing something you're passionate about, making an impact, making people smile, and doing it over and over again without getting tired. Beautiful. Do you know I agree with you? I mean, the part I cannot even argue, I can't argue, I can't argue at all, is the fact that you make people smile. There, there is no satisfaction that feels better. And that, seeing that it is you, that is the reason why somebody out there is happy with themselves. This has been an interesting ride on the business data of the week today. Do not forget to like this particular channel, subscribe to it, and share. Tell your friends about this channel and let them come here to learn something interesting. You're not missing out on anything particularly. There is a backlog of our content all loaded on this um, YouTube channel. Of course, you can see them through over and over and over again. I still remain in Mecca Eze, and with me in the studio with this fun time is Mr. Abidogun Peter. We've talked chess, we've talked business, we've talked impact, we've talked life, and of course, that is what we do here at Daba TV. Is there an entrepreneur, a CEO, a business owner, a business leader you want us to bring on here on Daba TV? Please drop a message in the comment section, and we're going to put it into consideration. 
All right here in the studio, we're going to be with the pressing. But that is it for now on the business leader of the week. Until we meet again, have fun, have a great week, and enjoy yourself. I'm feeling tired. Stepping around while you were gone. You don't deny it. You took me for granted for too long. Yeah.